natural and flawed creations crossed Yuki asked curiously. Tell me how Brahma did his creations. Markande replied, when Brahma got up from his sleep after the end of dissolution, Pralya, named Padram, he found a void all around himself. He remembered Narayana who is also known by the name of Nastanu i.e. one who dwells in water. Narayana was engrossed in his eternal sleep. After waking up, he rescued the earth, submerged in the ocean just like he had done in the previous kalpas by taking the forms of a boar, a fish and tortoise etc. But even after the earth was brought up from the seabed and was established above the ocean, it was still swinging like a boat. Narayana then created the mountains to stop the earth from swinging. But the mountains were burned down by Agni, fire, named Samvatak. The mountains submerged into the ocean. The mountains after having displaced the water had become fixed at their respective places. Therefore, Narayana divided the whole earth into seven islands and created the four lokas just like before. After that, five avidyas came into being. This way, the whole creation established themselves in five ways. The whole creation was hidden in darkness till this period. After this, Narayana created the ignorant animals, which symbolized the tamas guna. After the animals the deities who symbolized the sattva guna were created. Brahma was extremely satisfied by the creations of Narayana. But he was desirous of creating even more superior creatures. As a result a group of sadhakas named Avaksrota came into being. These sadhakas were humans who possessed Rajas Guna. The fifth creation of Anugraha was itself subdivided into four parts Viparyaya, Siddhi, Shanti and Shrishti. The sixth creation was of those special people who had the knowledge of past and present events. These people had wives, enjoyed life in a balanced way but were of evil nature. These people were known as Gutadik. The first creation was related with the manifestation of Lord Brahma himself. This great creation was known as the Mahashrishti. The second creation related with the part of Brahma is called Gutsaga. The third creation is called Prakrit and which consists of creatures possessing intelligence and flawed sensual perceptions. The fourth creation consists of the Stavars who are unable to move, e.g. vegetation. The fifth creation consists of four-footed animals. The sixth creation consists of the deities whereas the seventh creation that of human beings which originates from Avaksrota. The eighth creation is known as Anugraha. The ninth creation of Brahma is known as Prakrit, Natural, and Vikari, Flawed. These are the nine types of creation of Brahma. The root causes of this universe are Prakrit and Vikari. Creation of the deities Krostyuke then asked Markande about the origin of the deities. Markande replied, with the objective of creating the deities, demons, ancestors and human beings, Brahma abandoned the part of his physical body in the ocean. The demons originated from the thighs of his abandoned body. Lord Brahma blessed the demons with physical bodies, which were tamasic in nature. This part of Brahma's body became famous as Ratri, night. After that Brahma created the deities from his mouth with the help of Sattva Guna. The deities were given pure bodies. This part of Brahma's body which was Sattvic, pure, in nature became famous as day. After this, Brahma acquired another physical body and created the ancestors. After creating the ancestors, he abandoned his body, which transformed itself in the evening. Brahma then acquired another body, which was affluent of Raja's qualities and thus was created human being. He again abandoned his body and from it was created Jyotsana the transition period of day and night. Jyotsana, 
evening and day contain the quality of sattva in themselves. Night has the quality of tamas in itself. The deities, demons and human beings are most powerful during the day, night and jyotsana period respectively. The ancestors are most powerful and invincible during the evening time. Brahma then created creatures who had moustaches and beard on their face. Some creatures among them started attacking the others. Those who were being attacked and pleaded, save us were called the Rakshasas, demons. The attackers who thundered, we would devour you up, were known as Yaksh, celestial beings. Brahma was very displeased by their tantrums. Some of his hair fell down on earth and thus were created the snakes. The flesh-eating Ganas were next to be created. These Ganas were extremely volatile in nature. After that, Brahma created the Gangavs. This way after having created these eight types of divine creation, Brahma created all the animals and birds from his body. He created the goat from his mouth, lamb from his heart, cow from his stomach and back, animals like horse, elephant, donkey, rabbit, deer, camel and mule were created by Brahma from both his legs. Variety of vegetation and medicinal plants were created from the hair of his body. Brahma then created the following things from the first of his four mouths Gaya tree, tree rig, tree vrit, sam, ratanta and agnishtam. From his mouth facing south, he created Yaja, Treshtamchan, Panchadashastam, Vrithasam and Ukta. From his mouth facing west, he created Shan, Jagetichan, Panchadashastam, Varup and Atiratra. From his mouth facing north, he created 21 Atava, Aptayam, Anushtubha and Viraj. In the beginning of Kalpa, Brahma created the natural things like lightning, vajra, cloud, rainbow and birds. After that he created the deities etc. He then created stable things like mountains, living creatures that could move, demons, birds, animals and snakes etc. All these living creatures take birth and rebirths, reap the fruits of the past karmas done in their previous life. This is the way Brahma had done creation at the end of the dissolution period. Copulative creations Markandey says Brahma created 1000 couples from his mouth in the beginning of creation. These couples were radiant and possessed virtuous qualities, sattvic. Once again, Brahma created 1000 couples from his chest but this time they possessed the quality of Rajas. This phenomenon was repeated for the second time and once again 1000 couples manifested themselves from his chest. These couples were both Rajas as well as Tamasic by nature. At last Brahma created 1000 more couples from both his legs. These couples were completely Tamasic by nature. The couples started copulating and this process has been continuing since then. Brahma now became worried as to how to accommodate such a large number of people. Initially, these people used to roam about everywhere, as there were no permanent residences to accommodate them. At the arrival of Tretha Yuga, they developed attachment and started living in houses. Subsequently they started living in various types of abodes Pura, village, Dronimukha, Shaknaga, Kavatak, Dramay, Gram and Sangosh etc. Daksha's lineage Markandey says, Brahma on seeing that in spite of all his creations the population was not increasing, he decided to create his Manasputras. These Manasputras were created merely by his wish. Their names were Brigu, Pulastya, Pulaha, Kratu, Angira, Marichi, Daksha, Atri and Vashishta. After this, he first created the ferocious Rudra and then Sankalpa and Dharm. But all these people were very virtuous, 
knowledgeable and unaffected by worldly desires. They showed their disinclination towards the purpose for which they have been created by Brahma i.e. increasing the population. Brahma became very furious in his anger and created an entity whose half portion resembled a man's body while the remaining half resembled that of a woman. Brahma instructed that entity to bisect his body into two distinct forms of a man and a woman. The entity followed Brahma's instruction and this way Swayambhu Manu and Shatrupa came into being. Manu accepted Shatrupa as his wife. Two sons were born to them Priyavrata and Uttanpada. Apart from these two sons, two daughters were also born to them Akuti and Prasuti. Prasuti was married to Daksha while Akuti was married to Ruchi. Twenty-four daughters were born to Daksha and Prasuti out of which thirteen of them were married to Dharm. The remaining eleven daughters were married to sages like Bhrigu, Mahadev, Marichi, Angira, Atri etc. Dharm fathered Kama from Shraddha. Shri gave birth to the Dhriti and Nilma. Tushti gave birth to Santosh. Pushti to Lobha, Medha to Shru, Kriya to Dand, Buddhi to Bodh, Lajja to Vinay, Vapra to Vyavasya, Shanti to Kshema, Siddhi to Suk and Kirti gave birth to Yash. Kama, the son of Dharm was the father of Atiyarishta. Himsa the wife of Adharm gave birth to Anritha. Anritha was married to Nirithi. Two sons named Narak and Bhai and two daughters named Maya and Vedana were born to them. Maya gave birth to Mrithu, whereas Dukha was born as a result of Narak's marriage with Vedana. Five children were born to Mrithu Vyadi, Jara, Shoka, Trishna and Krodha. All of them were very irreligious by nature and they never got an opportunity get married and have progenies. Mrithu's wife Nirithi is also known by the name of Alakshmi. Altogether 14 sons were born to them. All these 14 sons of Mrithu dwell in the organs of human beings, during the time of destruction. Out of these 14 sons, 10 dwell in the sense organs of human beings and the 11th son dwells in the mind. They influence the sense organs and the mind of a man in a negative way by means of attachment and anger. The twelfth son exists in the form of arrogance. The thirteenth son upper adversely affects the intelligence of a man. The fourteenth son Dusa resides in the house of males. Dusa is naked, always hungry, his mouth facing downwards and coarse like the crow. Descendants of Dusa Markande says, Nimashti, the wife of Dusa was the daughter of Yam. Altogether 16 children were born to Dusa and Nimashti. Out of them 8 were sons and the remaining 8 were daughters. The name of the sons were Dantakrishti, Tathokti, Parivarta, Angadruka, Shakuni, Ganda, Pranrati, the Baha and Sasyaha while the names of the daughters were Niyojika, Virodhini, Swayamahrini, Brahmani, Rituharika, Smritihara, Bhishra and Vidshini. Danta Krishti causes the teeth of the child to make a grinding sound. Tathokti is commonly used while men are conversing by saying, so be it, Tathastu. Parivarta becomes happy by establishing an alien fetus in the womb of women. Angadruka causes the organs of human beings to throb and enables him to express the emotions of joy and sorrow. Shakuni resides in the bodies of birds like crow and animals like dog or fox. Ganda destroys all the virtues. Gabaha destroys the fetus in the womb of a woman while Sasyaha destroys all kinds of wealth. Among the daughters, Niyojika encourages a man to have illicit relationship and also to steal the wealth of others. Virodhini causes differences between husband and wife and also among the family members. Swayamahrani destroys the prosperity of a man. Brahmani causes restlessness and anger in the heart of a man living at one place for a long time. 
Rituharika destroys the menstrual cycle of women. Suritiharika causes loss of memory. Bhishra destroys the sexual powers of a man and woman. Dvashini causes jealousy in the heart of a man and woman. Altogether 38 children were born to all the 16 children of Duzah and Nemashti. All of them were wicked and caused miseries to people. The creation of Rudras Markande says, Now I am going to tell you about Rudrasraga. One of the eight sons of Brahma started wailing after being created from his, Brahma, body. Brahma asked him as to why he was crying. The crying child requested Brahma to give him a name. Brahma named him as Rudra since he was wailing at the time of his birth. But even after getting his name, the child's wailing did not stop. He wailed for seven times and as a result seven more children were manifested from his cries. Brahma named these seven children as Bhav, Shiva, Ishan, Pashupti, Bhim, Ugra and Mahadev. He also gave them abodes so that they could live. The following eight things respectively symbolize the forms of all these eight Rudras sun, water, earth, fire, air, sky, Dikshit Brahman and Soma. All these eight Rudras were also given their respective wives who were Suvachala, Uma, Vikeshi, Swadha, Swaha, Dik, Diksha and Rohini. The eight sons of all the eight Rudras are Chandaishwa, Shukra, Lohitang, Manojav, Skand, Sarg, Santan and Buddha respectively. Rudra had accepted Sati as his wife. Sati gave up her life because her father Daksha had shown disrespect to her husband Rudra. Sati took her second birth as Parvati, the daughter of Himavan. Mainak was her brother. Bhav married Parvati. Kyati was Brigu's wife. They had two children Dhata and Vidhata. Lakshmi was the consort of Narayana. Meru had two daughters Aiti and Niyati. Both of them were married to Dhata and Vidhata respectively. Each one of them had two sons. Aiti had named her son as Pran while Niyati named her son as Mrikandu. The same Mrikandu is my, Markande, father. My mother's name is Manaswini and my son's name is Vedashira. Sambuti the wife of Marichi gave birth to Pornmas. Smriti the wife of Marichi gave birth to four daughters Sinivali, Kuhu, Raka and Anumati. Ansuya, the wife of Sage Atri gave birth to three sons Soma, Dovasa and Daktatreya. Dut and Damboli were born to Preeti, the wife of Pulastya. He became famous as Agastya during the time of Swayambhuva Manavanta. Three sons Kurdam, Avavir and Sahishn were born to Kshama, the wife of Pulaha. Sanneti, the wife of Ritu gave birth to 60,000 Balkilyagandas. Urja the wife of Vashishta gave birth to seven sons Raja, Gatra, Urdhibahu, Sabal, Anag, Sutapa and Shukra. These seven are famous as the Saptarishis. Agni was married to Swaha. Three sons were born to them Pavak, Pavaman and Shuchi. The various Manvantas Swayambhuva Manvanta Markande says, Swayambhuva Manu had ten sons. He had divided the whole earth into seven continents. In the beginning of Treta Yuga, the sons of Priyavrata had done the same. Prajapti the daughter of Kardam Prajapti had ten sons and two daughters from Priyavrata. Names of these ten sons were Agnigna, Meltiti, Vayushman, Jyotishman, Gyutiman, Bhatya, Savan, Medha, Agnibahu and Mitra. Among all these ten sons, the last three never ruled any kingdom. The remaining seven sons were made the rulers of all the seven continents by Priyavrata. Agnigna was made the ruler of Jambudvip, Meltiti that of Plakshdvip. Vayushman was given Shalmalaidvip whereas Jyotishman was made the ruler of Kushdvip. Similarly, 
Dutiman was given Kronj Dweep to rule while Bhaktya was given Shak Dweep. The seventh son, Savan was made the ruler of Pushkar Dweep. Savan had two sons Medhavi and Dhataki. Savan subdivided the Pushkar Dweep into two parts and each part was given to each of the sons. Bhaktya had seven sons Jalag, Kumar, Sukumar, Marnavak, Kursokta, Medhavi and Mehadram. Bhaktya too subdivided the Shaktweep into seven parts and distributed them among all his sons. Similarly, Dutiman too had seven sons to whom were distributed his kingdom Kronjdweep after subdividing it into seven parts. Jyotishman, Vayushman and Mehrtithi made their respective sons the rulers after giving them kingdoms. Agnigna was the ruler of Jambudweep. He had nine sons. His kingdom was equally distributed among all of them. Navi the son of Agnigna was the father of Rishabh. Bharatha was the son of Rishabh. Bharatha was given the southern part of Rishabh's kingdom. Our country is named after Bharatha. Jambudweep Markande says that the total area of Jambudweep comprises of 1 lakh yojan while the area of Plakshdweep is twice the area of Jambudweep i.e. 2 lakh yojans. Similarly, Shalmali is twice the area of Plaksh while Kush is twice the area of Shalmali. The area of Kronjdweep is twice the area of Kushdweep whereas the area of Shaktweep is twice the area of Kronjdweep. The island of Pushkar is twice the area of Shark. Seven mountains are situated in all these seven islands. They are Himavan, Hemkut, Rishab, Meru, Neel, Shwet and Shringi. Ilavrit is situated in the middle of six mountains, which themselves are situated in the middle of the ocean surrounding all the seven islands named earlier. Sumeru mountain is situated in the central part of Ilavrit. People belonging to all the four castes Brahman, Kshatri, Vashya and Shudra reside in Ilavrit. Just above Ilavrit are the dwelling places of Lokpals like Indra etc. Lord Brahma's assembly is situated at the center. Beneath Ilavrit are situated the four mountains Mandar, Gandamdan, Vipul and Suparshwar. These four mountains are situated in each of the four directions. The great mountain Nishad is situated towards the west of Meru, while the great mountain Pariyatra is situated just behind it. Towards the south of Meru are situated the great mountains, Kalash and Himavan. The mountains Shringwan and Jarudhi are situated towards the north of Meru mountain. River Jambu flows all around the Meru mountain in a circular path. The origin of Ganga Markande says, River Ganga originates from a place named Dhruvada. This particular place is related with Narayanda. River Ganga then falls on the Sumeru mountain and gets distributed into four main streams. One of these streams flows towards Chaitrata forest. The name of this particular stream is Sita. The same Sita Ganga enters into the Varunoda reservoir and from there, it moves towards the ocean and again changes its course to get submerged into that stream of Ganga, which has fallen on the Gandamdan mountain and which is known as Alaknanda. Alaknanda after submerging into Mansarovar subsequently entered the Mehadri Himalaya where Lord Shankar held her in his locks of hair. He released river Ganga only at the request of sage Bhagirath. After being released, river Ganga got subdivided into seven streams and ultimately, all those seven streams submerged into the ocean. The stream of Ganga which originates from the west of Sumeru mountain is known as Suchakshu. This stream gets submerged in the ocean towards the south, after passing through many mountains. The fourth stream reaches Savita forest after passing through two mountains Suparshu and Meru. This particular stream is famously known as Bhadrasoma. 
Badrasoma Ganga ultimately gets submerged into the ocean after passing through mountains like Shankud and Vrishabh. Bata Varsha crossed Yuki asked Markande, Oh Lord, please describe about Bata Varsha. Markande replied, Bata Varsha is surrounded by oceans on all its three sides. People living towards the east of Bharata Varsha are known as Kirat while people living towards the west are called Yavan. The central part of Bharata Varsha is inhabited by all the four castes Brahman, Kshatri, Vashya and Shudra. The seven mountains are situated in the central part of Bharata Varsha. They are Mahendra, Malaya, Sahar, Shatiman, Raiksha, Vindhya and Pariyatra. There are thousands of hills situated in the vicinity of these seven mountains. The central part of Bharata Varsha is subdivided into Janpadas. The residents of these Janpadas are known as Mlecha and Arya. All the major rivers of Bharata Varsha like Ganga, Saraswati, Sindhu, Chandravaga, Yamuna, Shatadru, Vitasta, Irvati, Gomti, Vipasha and Gandaki etc. originate from the mountains situated in the central parts. The names of the prominent Janpadas situated in the central part of Bharata Varsha are Matsya, Aswakut, Kulya, Kuntal, Kashi, Koshal, Abhuda, Kalinga, Malak, Vrik etc. River Godavri flows towards the north of Sahir mountain. A city named Govardhan is situated near this mountain. Some other prominent places situated in the vicinity of this mountain are Bahalik, Vatgan, Amir and Kaltoyak. Kshatri, Vashya and Shudras live in the following states Shudra, Pehlap, Chamakandika, Gandhar, Yavan, Sindhu, Savir, Badrak, Shatadraj, Parad and Kekya. The following states are situated in the north of Bharata Varsha Tamas, Hansmarg, Kashmir, Shulik, Kuhak, Erna, Dava etc. States like Abrarak, Mugarak, Antagiri, Plavang, Mail, Damal, Vertik, Uktabrahma, Pragajyotish, Madra, Videha, Tamraliptak, Malla and Magad are situated in the east of Bharata Varsha. States situated in the south of Bharata Varsha are Pandya, Kerala, Chola, Maharashtra, Mahishik, Kalinga and Aymir. These are the Janpadas where Shabar live. Janpadas situated in the west of Bharata Varsha are Suryarak, Kalibala, Dog, Kaha, Pulin, Toshal and Koshal etc. Bharata Varsha is the only country in the whole world where all the four yugas Satya, Tretha, Dwapa, and Kali occur in a cyclic way. Bharata Varsha is the root of all forms of divinity where deities reside and Almighty God takes incarnation. Totus incarnation crossed Yuki asked Markande, O oh Lord, how does Sri Hari live in the form of a tortoise? Markande replied, Shri Hari in the form of a tortoise sits facing east. States situated in the central portion of his body are Vedi, Madra, Mandavya, Shalva, Kasa, Saraswat, Matsya etc. States which are situated in the mouth of the tortoise are Vrishadvaj, Anjan, Kasha, Magad, Pragajyotesh, Mithila, Koshal etc. In the right foot of the tortoise are situated states like Kalinga, Banga etc. Vindhya mountain is also situated in the right foot. States which are situated in the tail of the tortoise are Manimega, Kshadri, Kanch, Konkan, Panchamad, Waman, Shakar, Chulik, Asweksha etc. Mandakya, Chandava, Ashwa, Kalan, Gaur, Bharatwadi are the states that are situated in the left foot of the tortoise. Janpadas like Kalash, Himalal, Kronch, Kakaya, Takshashila, Gandhar, Haras, 
Udaya and Rajanya etc. are situated in the left side of the tortoise's abdomen. Narayana in the form of tortoise is that inconceivable soul in which reside all the lords of deities and constellations. Badrashwa Varsha Markande says, Badrashwa Varsh is situated towards the east of the great mountain Devkut. Five more mountains are situated within its area Poranj, Shvetapurna, Nila, Shaival and Panashalagra. Badrashwa consists of thousands of Janpadas. Numerous rivers like Sita, Shankavali, Badra and Chakravarta flows there. People living in Bhadrashwa Varsh are full of radiance and they live for 1000 years. Narayana dwells in Bhadrashwa in his incarnation of higher grief. Now I am going to tell about Ketumul Varsh which has seven mountains within its area Vishal, Kambal, Krishna, Jayant, Haripavat, Vishoka, and Vardhaman. There are thousands of smaller hills apart from these seven major mountains where people live. The names of the rivers flowing at Ketumul Varj are Vankshulma, Swakamba, Amoga, Kamini, Shyama etc. Narayana dwells in Ketumul Varj in his incarnation of a bow, Vara, Dot. Now listen about Uttar Kurudesha. There are thousands of trees which are fruit laden in all the seasons. Apparels are made from the bark of the trees and ornaments from its fruits. After being degraded, the residents of Devaloka take birth here. Uttakuru has two mountains Chandrakant and Suryakant. The river Bhadrasoma flows between these two mountains. Narayana in his incarnation of Matsya, fish, lives at Uttakuru. Chandradweep and Bhadradweep are the two famous islands situated at Uttakuru. Kimpurusha Varsha Markande says, The people residing in Kimpurusha Varsh enjoy a long life. They live for 10,000 years. They are never bothered by any kind of disease or sorrow. Just behind Kimpurusha Varsh is situated Hari Varsh. The residents of Hari Varsh enjoy an eternally youthful life because of the sugar cane juice they intake. Meru Varsh, which is situated near Hari Varsh, is also known as Ilavrit. It is devoid of the light of the sun but gets sufficient light from the radiant Sumeru mountain. It is so bright that even the sun gets overshadowed. People living in Meru Varsh enjoy a very long life for 30,000 years. Similarly people living in Ramyak Varsh sustain themselves by drinking fruit juice. They live for 10,000 years. Hiranyamal Varsh is situated towards the north of Ramyak Varsh where the river Hiramvati flows. The residents of Hiranyamal are powerful, rich and handsome in appearance. Swarochish Manvanta Krostyuki asked Markande, O oh great sage, now tell me something about Swarochish Manavanta. Markande replied, Once upon a time, there lived a Brahman at the bank of river Varuna. One day, a guest arrived at his place. The Brahman treated his guest with due respect. After formal introduction, the Brahman became aware that his guest was not an ordinary person. He had traveled around the world with the help of some special mantras he knew and medicinal herbs, which he had in his possession. The Brahman was quite impressed. He too wanted to see the whole earth. He requested his guest to give the mantra and the medicinal herbs so that he could travel around the world just like him. The guest applied some medicinal solution on his legs. After this the Brahman went to see the Himalayan mountain. While wandering there, the solution, which had been applied on his legs, got washed away. As a result, he now became immobile. He started looking all around himself. He found numerous apsaras entertaining the kinners, Gandharvas and deities. The Brahman was very much pleased to see the happy atmosphere prevailing all around Himalaya.
He thought of going back to his place but was unsuccessful, as the medicinal solution had been washed. He became very sad. An Apsara by the name of Varugini saw him in a miserable condition. She became infatuated by him. When she went near him, he asked, Who are you? Who is your husband? What are you doing here? After this, he narrated his own story and said, I had come from Arunanagar to see the Himalayas, but I am unable to return home as the medicinal solution, which was applied on my legs has been washed. Varugini told the Brahman that she was an Apsara. She also expressed her deep love towards the Brahman. She requested the Brahman to stay there and not to go back home. She assured him if he did, as per her instructions then he would enjoy an eternal youth. He would never become old. Varugini forcibly tried to embrace the Brahman. This made the Brahman very angry. He said, Varugini. The sacred scriptures prohibit a Brahman from indulging in sensual pleasures because it gives sorrow not only in this world but also after his death. But Varugini was not satisfied by his answers. She threatened to give up her life if the Brahman did not marry her. The Brahman did not agree. The Brahman purified himself by performing Achaman and began worshipping Agni. He said, O oh Agni, you are the root voice of all karmas. The deities bless us with rain only after you are pleased. O oh Agni, I need your blessings. I want to go back home. Varugini's modesty breached Markande says, Agni became pleased by the Brahman's devotion. Agni entered into his body. The Brahman's body illuminated due to Agni's radiance. When Varugini saw this, she was fascinated by the Brahman's appearance. The Brahman proceeded towards his home. Feeling helpless, Varugini cursed her fate. Varugini had once insulted a Gandav named Kali sometime in the past. Chancing upon the opportunity, Kali went to Varugini take his revenge. He had disguised himself as a Brahman. When she saw him, she said, I need your protection if you heed to my request then you will certainly attain virtuosity. Kali did not want her to know about his real identity, so he replied, If you really want my protection, then you must have your eyes closed while having copulation. Varugini agreed. His marriage with him Manoma in due course of time, Varugini became pregnant. She gave birth to a child who was named Swarochi. The child was extraordinary. In a very short time, he became proficient in all the scriptures. One day, young Swarochi saw a terrified girl near the Mandar mountain. When the girl saw Swarochi, she pleaded for help. Swarochi assured her and asked about her identity. She said, my name is Manoma. Once I had made fun of a sage who was doing penance near the Kalash mountain. At that time, two of my companions Vibhavari and Kalavti were also present with me. The sage cursed all three of us. Vibhavari and Kalavti got inflicted with leprosy and tuberculosis due to his curse. Even I was not spared. I am being chased by a ferocious demon since then. I need your protection from that demon. I am giving you this very powerful weapon with which you can successfully kill the demon. Swarochi took the weapon. During the conversation between Swarochi and Manoma, a demon arrived just then. The demon wanted to devour Manoma. Swarochi was confused as he did not want the sage's curse to go futile. He allowed the demon to get hold of Manoma, who then started wailing. Hearing her wail, Swarochi thought of killing the demon. Becoming afraid, the demon released Manoma from his clutches and pleaded Swarochi to spare his life. He then narrated his own story. He said, 
you have rescued me from sage brahmamitra's curse actually my name is indi vraksha i had requested brahmamitra to teach him the nuances of ayurveda which he refused i decided to learn ayurveda while sage brahmamitra taught his disciples by hiding myself one day the sage came to know of this he cursed me to become a demon i begged for his forgiveness he said whatever i have said will definitely come true you will certainly become a demon after becoming a demon you will try to devour your own daughter but would regain your original form of gandhav due to the touch of astral weapon with which you would be attacked oh great soul since you have liberated me from the curse therefore i hand over this girl to you accept her as your wife i will also bestow the knowledge of ayurveda which i had learned from sage brahmamitra manoma requested swarochi to cure her companions from the diseases they were suffering from swarochi assured manoma that he would certainly cure her companions with the help of ayurveda which the demon had taught him both swarochi and manoma got married swarochi then went to her companions and cured them from their diseases swarochi's other marriages mark and they says after getting cured from their respective diseases both the companions of manoma expressed their gratitude to swarochi swarochi married both vibhavari as well as kalavati to show her gratitude vibhavari taught swarochi a special art that helped him to understand the language of all the living creatures kalavati on the other hand while narrating her tale said a demon named ali had asked my hand in marriage from my father but my father refused the demon got angry and killed my father i wanted to commit suicide but sati the wife of shambhu prevented me from doing so by saying you would be fortunate to become a wife of great soul swarochi swarochi's reproachment mark and they says after getting married swarochi started living happily along with all his three wives at malaya mountain one day impressed by the mutual love swarochi and his wives had for each other a female ruddy goose told another one very rarely are found such couples who have love for each other but the other female ruddy goose did not agree she replied you are wrong swarochi is not a blessed man actually he deceives all of his three wives even his love for all the three wives is varied when one wife is desirous of his love he embraces the other wife so where is the question of having mutual love for one another in comparison my husband and i are blessed because we have mutual love and respect for each other swarochi who was listening to their conversation realized how true the ruddy goose was but still he did not change his ways and continued to live with his wives for 100 years one day while wandering swarochi saw a deer surrounded by a herd of doe one of the doe on having a desire to copulate with the deer started sniffing him in anticipation but the deer became angry and said do you think i am as shameless as swarochi a man who is sought by numerous beauties his condition becomes laughable not only does the daily routine of such a man gets disturbed but also his behavior is never fair towards his wives the origin of swarochish manumakan they says swarochi became very sad after hearing the deer's utterances he realized how lowly and mean he had become he decided to renounce life after abandoning his wives but this did not happen because as soon as he met them he forgot everything about renunciation he continued to live with his wives in due course of time swarochi begot three sons vijay merunan and prabhav swarochi ordered the construction of three cities for his sons 
which he donated to each of them. The city situated towards the east was given to Vijay while the city situated towards the north named Nangavati was given to Merunan. The city named Tal, which was situated in the south, was given to Prabhav. Swarochi then lived happily with his wives. One day, Swarochi had gone for hunting. He saw a wild boar and adjusted his arrow on the bowstring to kill it. Just then, a doe arrived and requested him to kill her instead of killing that boar. She said, kill me with your arrow so that I get liberated from my sorrows. I don't want to live because I have become infatuated with such a person whose heart lies somewhere else. My aspirations remain unfulfilled. So death is my only refuge. Swarochi was very much amazed. He asked, Who is that fellow? The door replied, It is nobody than you. Swarochi was puzzled, How can this be? I am a man whereas you are an animal. The door then requested Swarochi to embrace her, which Swarochi agreed to do. As soon as Swarochi embraced that door, she got transformed into a beautiful lady. Swarochi was very much astonished but the doe said that, don't get puzzled. I am the presiding deity of this forest. I have come to seek your help on the request of the deities. It is your duty to help me in giving birth to a son named Manu. Swarochi married her and in course of time, she gave birth to a son. The whole atmosphere became joyous and happy at the birth of that child. Gandhavs started singing songs and the Apsaras danced. The deities showered flowers from heaven. The child was so radiant that all the four directions became illuminated by his brilliance. Swarochi named this child as Dutiman. This child was later on also known as Swarochish, the son of Swarochi. One day, while wandering, Swarochi saw a swan who was telling his wife, Now, we have become old, so what is the use of remaining attached to each other? It's time, we must seriously start thinking of renouncing life. But his wife said, This world is meant for enjoying sensual pleasures. Even the Brahmins perform yagas with that purpose in their mind. All the virtuous people indulge in virtuous activities with the sole desire of experiencing the pleasures of life. How come the idea of renunciation has entered your mind? The swan replied, One who is not attracted towards sensual pleasures is totally devoted to God. One who is attached by worldly matters can never reach God. Have you not seen the state of Swarochi? How can he be liberated from the sorrows of the world if he is not even willing to shun the attachments? I am not like Swarochi. I know that after enjoying a fully satisfied life, this is the time to renounce everything. After hearing this, Swarochi was very much ashamed of himself. He decided to do penance. His wives also accompanied him. All of them ultimately went to heaven by the virtue of their penance. Swarochi Shmanvanta Markande says, During this Swarochi Shmanavanta, Indra was famously known as Vipashchit. The other deities were known as Parvat and Tushit. The names of the Saptarishis who lived during this Manavanta were Oja, Stam, Pran, Dup, Ali, Rishabh, Nishchar and Avavir. Swarochi Manu had seven sons who were very mighty and brave. Chakra and Kimpurusha were two of them. The descendants of Swarochi ruled the earth till the end of this Manavanta. Krostyuki asked, O oh Lord, tell me about the treasures of this world. Markande replied, Goddess Lakshmi is the presiding deity of learning, Vidya, called Padmini. After getting perfection in this Vidya, a man becomes the master of eight types of treasures Padma, Mahapadma, Maka, Kakapa, Mukunda, Nandak, Neel and Shank. 
The treasure called Padma is pure in nature. A man who becomes the master of this treasure mainly deals in things like gold and silver etc. Not only he, but also his descendants derive benefits from this particular treasure. A person who is the master of Mahapadma deals in things like pearls, corals etc. This particular treasure does not abandon a man till his seventh generation. The treasure called Makar is tamasic in nature. A man who is the master of this particular treasure is basically tamasic by nature. Such a man has mastery in handling over various weapons like swords, bows and arrows etc. This particular wealth remains with a man only for one generation. The treasure called Kakkapa is also tamasic in nature. A master of this particular treasure enjoys all the pleasure of this world and he does not trust any person easily. This treasure also remains with a man only for one generation. The treasure called Mukunda comprises of Raja's quality. A master of this treasure becomes proficient in four types of musical instruments like Veena, Venu, Mridand etc. Such a man earns lot of money by exhibiting his art. The treasure called Nandak is a combination of Rajas and Tamas qualities. A man who gets influences by this treasure becomes immobile. Such a man deals in things like metals, jewels, cereals etc. The master of this treasure is very benevolent and kind-hearted. This particular treasure remains with a man till the seventh generation. The treasure called Neel is also a combination of Rajas and Sattva qualities. A master of this treasure deals in things like clothes, cotton, pearls, fruits, flowers and things made from wood. This particular treasure remains with a man till three generations. A possessor of this treasure is a great social worker and constructs bridge, ponds etc. The treasure called Shank comprises of Rajas and Tamas qualities. Only one person can master this particular treasure. Such a man enjoys good food and is fond of wearing expensive clothes. Normally, this type of man does not give shelter to other people and is constantly thinking of his own betterment. Autumn Manvantar King Uttam abandons his wife Krostyuke says, Oh Lord! Now tell me about the Autumn Manavantar. Markande replied, Uttanpada and Suruchi had a son named Uttam. Uttam was married to Bahula. Bahula did not love Uttam and always showed disrespect towards him. One day, while both of them were sitting in the court, watching the proceedings, Uktam offered a betel leaf to Bahula which she refused. King Uktam felt dishonored. He ordered his attendant to abandon the queen in the forest. Bahula too was very happy, thinking that now she will not have to be in the company of Uktam. This way, Bahula was taken to the forest. One day, a sad Brahman came to Uktam and said, O oh king, somebody has abducted my wife. I need your help in finding out my lost wife. Uttam asked the Brahman about the nature, physical construction and about the age of his wife. The Brahman revealed all the facts related with his wife. The king was not impressed. The facts, which the Brahman had furnished, went to prove that his wife was not a chaste lady. The king expressed his view about his wife in so many words. He said, what is the use of having such a wicked wife? Forget about her. I will give you another one with all the good qualities. The Brahman replied, O oh king, it is one's duty to protect one's wife no matter how wicked she may be. By protecting your wife, your children also get protected. A man who does not protect his wife, has a son of hybrid class. His ancestors are degraded from the heaven because of such type of sons. I am not able to perform my religious obligations because of the absence of my wife. O oh king, please help me. 
While searching the Brahman's wife, King Uttam saw a sage at a secluded place. When the sage saw King Uttam, he wanted to offer some urdhya, some type of offering, to him, which his disciples prohibited him from doing. Then, the sage changed his mind and offered his seat to the king. The king asked about the reason why he changed his mind of offering the urdhya. The sage replied, Though you are the descendant of Swayambhu Manu, but since you have committed a grave sin by abandoning your wife, I decided that you are not fit to be offered the urdhya. No matter how mean your wife is, it is your duty to protect her at all costs. King Uttam was very ashamed of himself. He asked the sage about the whereabouts of the Brahman's wife. The sage replied, his wife has been abducted by the demon, Balak the son of Adri. He has kept her in the forest called Upilavat. Go and help the Brahman to meet his wife so that he doesn't commit a grave sin like you. Brahman's wife returns home Markande says, When King Uttam reached Upilavat forest, he saw a woman eating a shrifle fruit. The king asked that woman whether she was the wife of that Brahman Susharma. The woman replied in the affirmative and said, The demon abducted me while I was sleeping. Since that day, he has kept me here. I am very afraid of that demon. The king then asked the woman about the demon's whereabouts. The woman pointed towards the direction of the demon's path. The king went in that direction. When the demon saw the king approaching him, he bowed down in reverence and said, O oh king, what can I do for you? The king asked, Why have you abducted the wife of this Brahman? The demon replied, I am not the demon who devours human beings. I devour their flaws. I have many beautiful wives. So where is the need of aspiring for another woman? Actually, the Brahman is a very learned man and has mastered the mantras. By chanting Rakshobna mantras during oblations, he has increased my hunger by making incantations. Therefore, I have abducted his wife to prevent him from accomplishing any yagya. The king became very sad. He thought, what a grave sin I have committed by abandoning my wife. Earlier, that sage too did not find me fit for giving Ardhya. Now, this demon is also aware of the importance of one's wife in religious ceremonies. How cruel I have been to my wife. The demon told the king, O oh king, what should I do for you? The king replied, devour the flaws of this woman so that she becomes humble. After that, carry her back home. The demon acted as per the instructions of King Uttam. As a result, the Brahman's wife became very humble. She said to the king, It seems, there is no fault of this demon. Perhaps, I must have caused separation between a husband and wife in my previous life and for that very reason, I was forced to suffer this separation with my husband in this present life. The demon said, O oh king, what else do you want from me? The king said, you must be present before me whenever I remember you. The demon agreed. He carried the Brahman's wife to her home. The sage and King Uttam and birth of Autumn Manumakande says, King Uttam wondered as to what should he do to get liberated from the sins of abandoning his wife. He requested the sage to help him in this regard. The sage informed the king that his wife was living at Ranatal. The king of the serpents Kapotak is looking after her. Kapotak has a daughter named Nanda. Being concerned about her mother's future, Nanda had hidden your wife. The sage became very furious and cursed her. As a result, she became dumb. Uptam, your wife was always a chaste woman. 
It was only due to evil influences of the planets that she was not paying adequate attention to you. Now, you should go and take her back to your home. Uktam returned back to his palace. Markande says, Uktam met the Brahman and told him that now as he had reunited with his wife, it was now his turn to help him, King, to reunite with his wife. The Brahman assured Uktam that he would perform a yagya named Mitravinda, which would help him to achieve his goal. He requested Uktam to bring his wife so that the yagya could be performed. Uktam remembered Nisachar, a demon, and requested him to bring his wife. Nisachar went to Pata Loka and brought his wife. The queen was very happy to see her husband once again. She requested him to cure Nanda who had become dumb for no fault of hers. Saraswat Japa was chanted to cure Nanda. When Nanda regained her voice, she came to the oblation site and after embracing the queen, blessed her by saying that she would become a proud mother of a very famous son named Manu. After that, she went back to Pata Loka. In due course of time, the queen gave birth to a son who was named Autumn by the sages. Autumn Manvantar Markande says, O oh sage, the following Ganas who reigned during Autumn Manavantar are very famous. They are the first Gan Swadma. The second Gan Satya was related with the deities. The third Gan was Shiva, the fourth was named Pratardhan and the fifth Gan was Vashwarti. Each of the Ganas are the master of twelve deities. Indra by the name of Sushanti rules all the three worlds by the virtue of accomplishing 100 Ashwamedha Yagyas. He along with Shiva and Satya etc. bestows peace to the world. The descendants of Autumn ruled the whole earth for the full period of Autumn Manavanta. The Saptarishis during this Autumn Manavanta were the sons of Sage Mahatma. The description of this third Manavanta is now complete. Now I am going to tell you about the fourth Manavanta, which is also known as Tamas Manavanta. If you enjoyed this audiobook, please like and subscribe to be notified of when new audiobooks are uploaded. Thank you for listening and learning. Shanti.